I think whoever prepares themselves the best and pays the most attention in the details gets the upper hand. Just try to stay at that limit as long for as long as I can. It's actually a very good question. I don't know what I would change. I would have paid a more than one time a year. <laughs> Kept it a secret even from my teammates, but I do think that I have what it takes uh, to fight for the win. Do you really think you can win another one? Yes, I do. I won my first monument, so I'm very proud of that, because it was not just myself, but the effort of the whole team. The mechanics that actually brought up the idea of using the dropper seat post and everybody getting together to prepare for that. And then the execution on the day with, with the help of my teammates, we raced perfectly. And to be able to pull a win and uh, get away with it, it was something special. I was going to ask about the dropper seat post. I don't remember in the days, weeks leading up to the race, anybody talking about that being your plan. How did you keep that quiet? We kept it a secret even from my teammates. We were testing it in the winter already. I thought that if I made it uh, publicly known that I was going to use it, then some other guys might also try it. But now I don't think many guys think that it's faster or better. The plane worked perfectly and uh, we managed to keep it quiet. Uh, my teammates they didn't know what to say exactly when they saw the bike uh, on the eve of the race. They were making fun of it a little bit, but they were also, they knew I'm crazy in the descent. So they were like, oh, yeah, do whatever you want. We will split the prize money if you win. <laughs> it's going to be similar uh, this year. I have uh, similar goals uh, with Milan San Remo, uh, Perry Rubé and uh, Tour of Flanders in the spring. And then following, uh, of course, by the preparation for the tour in the summer, which I hope will go better than this year. And then, yeah, maybe uh, some more races and world championships in the autumn. You've mentioned about your objectives. How well do you think you can go in a race like Paris Roubaix? Having come fifth, having achieved the, the win of the monument, the Milan San Remo race, do you really think you can win another one? Yes, I do. I had confidence that there is a possibility that I win last year, uh, up to the point that I punctured. So you do need a lot of good luck in that race to be able to be up there with the best. But I do think that I have what it takes uh, to fight for the win. And uh, the day of uh, Paris Roubaix for me is like Christmas Day, you know, it happens one time in a year, but I'm very much looking forward to it. If it works, it will be uh, a dream come true for me. If it doesn't, then I have another chance uh, 365 days later. Of course, you prepare physically uh, for the race, but you also need to prepare psychologically to make sure that you understand that on that day many things will happen. I think because it's so complicated technically uh, and tactic wise, I think that's why it suits me better because all in all I'm not probably one of the physically strongest riders in the world but uh, in a race like Paris Roubaix when also the mindset and uh, how prepared are you for it uh, helps then I think uh, it, it plays in my, in my benefit. When you, the, the going gets really hard and you're, you're on the limit, what is it that you do that keeps you going? I think the focus keeps me going. I'm prepared for it uh, beforehand. Um, I know I need or I want to do my best and uh, that's what keeps me moving. I know I can't do or suffer more than my maximum, so uh, it also helps if you know, yeah, there's always, I'm always going to be on my limit and I can't go beyond that. So I just try to stay at that limit as long for as long as I can. Let's look at Barry and Victorious next year. What can we expect from the team? Many young guys that will need to step up and uh, will have responsibility to, to deliver uh, some results. A lot of them can, can win big races and they perhaps maybe some of them didn't yet, but uh, I think they're uh, yeah, ready for, uh, for, the, for the step to step up. People talk a lot about racing becoming harder, it's becoming faster. Do you agree with that? And if so, what do you think it is that's causing that? I agree that the level has become higher in the last years because everybody is more and more uh, focusing on the details that actually matter and at the end make a change in your performance. We have a nutritionist in the team, we have uh, six or seven uh, trainers or coaches that follow us daily on what we do in training. And I'm sure that the other teams are doing the same. So that's why in the races we are more equal and uh, it's more open. It's getting faster in the last years, but I think it's a normal process. I think in also in other sports or industries, like the science has moved forward and this is just the way it is, uh, because also the information is widely available on the internet. 
yeah, the young riders have a much easier task than they had uh, when, I, when I turned professional or even 20 years ago. There are some things happen now that aren't expected. Yeah. More or less entertaining. It's getting more and more popular. It's the cycling is at its peak and probably other sports as well of uh, its popularity. And uh, of course, it's uh, better to watch if there is so many names fighting for for the title or for the for that big win. I think whoever prepares themselves the best and pays the most attention in the details gets the upper hand. But then again, sometimes there is also like talents that just exceed everyone else, as we see with I don't know today or Valtonet or whoever. There's always going to be people that are better than the others or Remco. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, if they make a slight mistake, then they might be at the similar level that all of us others can can get to. Is, is there anybody that you look up to and admire and think, I want to be that person or, or, or I could be that person? Yeah, I think from the results points of view and uh, also the the work ethics and all that, I think uh, about on that, I think he's really uh, uh, the best all rounder, uh, very good in, in all of the terrains. And yeah, uh, I don't think I'm ever able to do that, but yeah, still. <laughs> Is it a job or is it what you might call a labour of love? You, you work so, hard at it, but you love doing it, of course. Yeah, my wife always says, of course she would also not mind if I had a normal job and I, I uh, stayed with the family every night and uh, woke up with them every morning, even though I had to leave, I would have to leave for the, for the daytime job for uh, eight or 10 hours uh, during the day or whatever. But she says, I know that then you would also want or need it to ride your bike for two or three hours a day, which would make you non-existent in our family. So it's better that they pay you for it uh, because it's uh, so big, uh, such a big passion for you. Then, uh, yeah, then we do it the other way around. But it, on that point, I mean, it must be hard. I, I, you have family. You have yeah, I have two, two kids. Yeah. One is uh, Julia is two and a half years old and Oliver is uh, half six months old. So it's hard. I mean, you're, you're away from home so much. Of course it's hard, yeah, but you also, it doesn't happen from one day to the other. You grow with it, you learn to live with it step by step. And uh, I think yeah, we are in a pretty good place at the moment. And uh, I will be very happy to, to continue uh, with this way of living for uh, another couple of years. If you could change one thing about your sport, what would that be? It's actually a very good question. I don't know what I would change. I would have Paris Robey more than one time a year, <laughs> but then it wouldn't be as special, so I guess not. I don't know, I guess I like, I really, really like the, the sport the way it is, and I like my job.